I'm Katrina, and this is Sew and Tear. And today we're gonna to talk about this cool thing. It's so cool, he says so too. Uh, this is the ultimate quail feeder. Now, what's so special about this? It took a long time to figure out what was right. <laughs> it has no waste, no waste. Any feeder that you have out there has waste and um, quail, once they figure out that they can pull food out of the feeder, they will. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, the, the video for part one for this, um, I'll put a card up above and uh, that will show you the steps we took to get to this decision. So the steps that we took to, he's so excited about it. Uh, the steps that we took to uh, invent different things along the way, things that work, things that may work for you in your own situation, um, things that work better in a cage situation than, than outside of the you know, aviary situation. Um, but this is what came up with uh, for aviary setting. It would work for a cage setting too. We're going to be implementing this on not quite as big, but we're gonna be implementing the same idea on to our quailmobiles, which I don't have a video on yet, but I will. Uh, but this is awesome. You can see, so you can see them eating and they have their heads all the way in and they don't have any food um, outside of that. So there's no waste, everybody gets a turn this one has um, this one has six on either side and one in the end. The other aviary has um, the other aviary has 14 I think. So this one has 13, the other one has 14 holes. So it's enough that quite a few birds can eat at once and not push each other around or anything else. Now, my birds like to lay right by there, so I don't know if they're like eating in one end and plopping out the other <laughs> while they're eating or what. But I do notice that since we've gone to this feeder, um, I wouldn't say all of them are even, I would say a large percentage of the eggs, a, a, a surprisingly large percentage of the eggs I will find um, right there. It's, I, would, I wouldn't even say it's a majority, but it's a large number. And so that's pretty cool um, to have them in a place that you know where they're going to be. Um, it also just means that I need to scratch away the surface to look for extra eggs underneath, which is fine. As long as you do it every day, you know which ones are, are uh, new ones. But it works. It works really well. I don't know what you're doing. Just go around her. Go around her. <laughs> um, sometimes they're not the brightest. <laughs> but they can come get a snack and then uh, behind where I am is the water. So I now have a system that that he thinks is great. Um, I now have a system that is amazingly clean and efficient and does not waste. It's the same with the water. It doesn't. It doesn't waste water. You don't have risk of you know mosquitoes coming in and and he's he's learning. <laughs> you don't have the risk of mosquitoes coming in and landing in the water dish and making it you know all that. You just have to make sure it's working and and move on. Um, with this, you just need to fill it whenever it empties and move on. It holds a. It's it's close to a, a bag and three fourths, I think. It's either, it's it's more than a bag and a half, I know that, um, of feed. So you can, you know, look at how many animals you have and how long it takes you to go through that much. And then um, add some more time because you're likely losing more feed than you think you are. I know I was before I put this in. Uh, I, you know, I think they were just churning it into the wood chips. It's probably very nutrient rich <laughs> compost we're making here. But um, let me, take you through the steps of making this and we will um, hopefully get a lot of people doing no waste feeders and it's awesome. All right, here's the adventure. Here's our adventure for you to enjoy 
and I hope that you find it interesting and uh, inspiring. So we are using our whole saw kit again. So we have our large mandrel and I'm going to be using the one and a half whole saw. This is the one that I've used, I think this is the one I've used for the smaller um, Tupperware sized ones. So this has a shape and this has a shape. And so they have to fit. If you put it in there and you don't have anything coming out this side, that's wrong. If you if you twist it again and you get that out, that's that's the correct uh, placement. And then again, put your nut on. So this now, this whole assembly goes into your drill. So <clears throat> when measuring this, we have a lip on the bottom. I don't know if you guys can see that. Don't include that in your measurement, or you can just add it three and a fourth plus plus, what is this, an eighth? A little more than an eighth. So the way I had this before, I had six holes on either side and one on the end. Because of this design, so this will end up having 12 holes and be able to feed a lot of birds. First hole, I'm going to make it How about right here? Oh, looks like it punched our little poker chip in. So I might actually be able to do more than more than six on a side. Let's see, one, two, three. Four, five, six. I think I can get at least seven. I think so. So I'm gonna go do it. See, like that one didn't come out. So when that happens, if it's close enough to the tip, you can just get it off. If not, that's when you stick something in this hole and push it up. All right. One side done. Let's flip it over. All right, there we go. leave all the plastic here. I'm just going to run my hand in every hole, make sure there's nothing holding on, no sharp edges. This plastic is thick enough. I don't feel like, um, I don't feel like it's a hazard to the birds, like sharp edges or anything. Some plastics are thinner and you can have more issues. And we also don't want the birds eating the plastic. So we have our feeder that has 14 holes in it. Uh, all right, so we're doing the smart thing and clamping it to a table. And while he's doing that, this is the goal. First is gonna cut off this entire portion and then this interior part right here. And what that will allow the birds to do is once it's inside, here will be the outside of the, so the outside is on this side of the feeder and they'll be able to stick their head in and down and then get the food that's here. Food will be sitting on top of this and when it falls down it will fall in around a little bit here so they can actually get so they can actually get it like this and they should be able to do that so we'll see if it works.
This is why super big C clamps come in handy sometimes. All right, so now he's going to cut out. So this is sitting this way, and he's going to cut out this part right here. Go ahead. Right below the letters? Yeah. And there's our piece. Good job. So we have that matches up. And then that. It's a little bit bigger, but it's okay. So I think... You wanna go oh, that's okay, smaller. though. This is fine. I was thinking that if you can make it flatter here, then that would be good. But this is the part that matters because... This is the part the birds are going in to get, so that's good. Good job. Here's a trick for when your table's too wide. You put one C-clamp to hold a board, and then you can use all your little C-clamps. <laughs> So when Walt did one side, I'm going to do the other side. Okay, go ahead. It has a piece of plywood. And it is marking where the holes are. He has this lifted up a little bit on the inside. And these holes are drilled a little smaller than uh, than the elbows. This is different than the, uh, than the other one. So what he's doing is he's using C-clamps to hold it and then going to drill the holes out and then he's going to attach our little elbows that he's adjusted to the board. That was the piece that we were missing from the beginning is how to appropriately attach it to the garbage can. And I think this will work. So you guys have seen this whole saw throughout this whole video. Oh, I see. So this is the size of the elbow. And you're saying this is the other one. That's how I would do it. And because it's because this hole is going to be bigger than this outer hole, it doesn't have to be exactly right. He's using a Phillips head just as a, um, a dent, kind of as an awl to make a dent so that the except for maybe on that one. <laughs> Making a dent first will make sure that the whole saw doesn't walk. <coughs> and it is important that this be tight when you start.
This is hard. <coughs> the plywood? It's just that the wood is hard, or is the te are the teeth getting no, it's got full. dull? Huh? Oh, it got full. Got full. <laughs> well. It's a long way to make them come out easier. By filling it up. Jamming it up. <clears throat> All right. So next step is to cut it off. Much easier way to do it with this clamp yeah. in it. The clamps. Yeah. Safer too. Oh, you wanna show people what you're doing? He's using that as a leverage just to get it's just a piece of PVC pipe. Just to get it a little bit tighter. To make it a little less painful. On the fingers? Yeah. It's, it's pretty when you push it without leverage. Alright, so all he's doing is putting the flat edge of the the flat the part that he cut in there to match and drilling a hole to attach. This is a great example of why you want two drills, um, one to drill the hole and one to uh, do the screw. <clears throat> And you want to make sure that the screw either is not long enough to go through for the PVC or you have the capacity to cut it off so that the birds, when they stick their head in there, they don't get screwed. <laughs> and the reason for drilling a hole before you do a screw um, is so that you don't crack the wood. You have less likelihood of cracking it. And for guidance. Yes, that's a good idea. So I do feel tips of those on there. Yeah, and the other one has them too. I don't know if you want to cut them or, or just put some some glue or... Um, we can cut them or we can dull them. Just as long as they don't have pipe spikes, I think they'll be fine. Well, I think they're not very sharp. They're not. It's not actually that far. I think if we all the point that would be good. <laughs> Thank you.
Bigger one? Mm. This should be okay. Hmm? This should be okay. You wanna try the bigger one? You can, but it all works. It's fine. Yeah, I think it's better than taking it all apart. Actually, that circle file might be working better, huh? Thanks to the circle. Yeah. It's a half circle file. Which ones did you do? Huh? Which ones did you do? This one. Oh yeah, that's good. Alright, so you can file them. <clears throat> they all feel good now? Yeah. That was fast. It was only one. No, I think it was two of them, wasn't it? Okay, cool. We'll have to check the other one. Oh, the other one has more. So that whole contraption he just set inside. And now you're going to screw it together? Yeah. So my concern was that we wouldn't be able to match these ridges. And it looked like on the other side that he did, that, it, that he did it. And he was able to. You're okay there? Mm-hmm. Did you only drill on the top on the other side or the bottom too? Top. Top. Yeah. Here, probably it should be okay. Um, I think probably should because they're gonna they're gonna pull stuff out and get it in that crack. Mm, maybe won't hurt, right? Mm. Should I copy this thread? <laughs> no. And we probably need more fire screws. Yep. Is that a good name for them? Project Pro screws. Project screws. Yeah. Good? 
Merci. So Manuel's making a little triangle to go on the inside so that it doesn't, he's measuring the, the bottom right there, so that the food doesn't sit in the middle because since we put these elbows in, they're not going to be able to reach all the way to the middle. Does that work? So the idea behind this is that you can fill, up, fill it up. It holds more than one 50 pound bag. Mm. Huh? Looks pretty good so far. Here. So that's almost a full 50 pound bag. So it's, it has room for almost a bag and a half, I think. Yeah, there is food. I can see it. So I want to talk a little bit about siding. So number one, I like to have it on a flat surface. If these girls move, we can just show you. Hi. Um, so that is a piece of urbanite that I got from my neighbor. She had her her uh, driveway or her walkway uh, ripped up and redone. So. I was able to use that and and what that does is it provides something flat that it can sit on and it also provides uh, an elevation so it, it elevates it enough that they're not likely to scratch wood chips into it because that would be a concern is that they get filled up with wood chips just from them scratching into it and then the other thing is that I was going to cut off that handle there but um, instead of doing that, I decided not to. Uh, I was going to cut off the handle and put it up against the wall, but um, they like to walk around the exterior of the of the of the aviary. You can see right now, like most of them along the exterior. You know, they still have a pumpkin that they're working on. They do go in the middle, but they their concentrated activity is is around the outside, and so. I figured this way they can walk back and forth, you know, go to back and forth to the water and all that. Thank you for demonstrating, little girl. And also, I left a big enough space that I can collect eggs that they lay back there. So that was my goal. I did not put a feeding side over there. Um, yeah, but it works. Works good. I know it's a little dark in here, but give you guys a side shot. Um, one's over here feeding. There's an empty spot. And there's some over here feeding. And you can see this is what I mean with all the eggs. <laughs> they tend to lay eggs right there. <laughs> you can see there's one, two, three, four. There's one covered up here. Ooh, someone, someone bumped that one too hard and it broke it. And I just stepped on that. And they love it. They know what it is. But they don't break them on their own. This is the lid and um, it's just made with plywood and a little, it's just made with plywood and a little, um, these are actually garden stakes, but little thing inside. You can make your lid any way you want as long as it, you know, doesn't fly off, you're good. So this is how this one ended up. You gonna show us how it works? Show us how it works. They can get in there and eat quite nicely. Thank you, little lady. Oh, honey, she's eating. <laughs> Honey, she's eating. Thanks for watching, and I hope this video inspires you to make a no waste feeder as well. It absolutely works, and I am so thankful that we finally got it right. And <laughs> not losing food is a good thing for everybody involved. Have a great day, and share this with someone who needs less waste in their life.